Hello, welcome. This is um, Edexcel's M1 uh, June 2015 paper. Now, um, this is obviously question one. We're given, um, what I'm trying to draw here is the scenario that you're given. Um, we've got two particles, P and, P and Q. Um, P has a mass of uh, just M. Uh, Q has a mass of Km. Now, we don't know what K is, um, but presumably, probably going to be asked to find it out. Uh, but anyway, give you the background first. So, they were initially travelling towards each other, um, P with a speed of 5U uh, and Q with a speed of U. Now, is that is really annoying this, partly because the initial speed you denote by U, generally, in your, in your Subat equations you will denote the initial speed as U. And we've already got a U, so we can't say U equals 5U, so I, I just put the initial speed is equal to 5U. Okay, um... And then they both bounce off each other going in the opposite direction they were initially going to um, at half the speed. And the first question asks us to find the value of k. Now, th this key thing here is what's going to enable us to answer this question. Now, the momentum before equals the momentum after. Now, momentum, well, momentum is mass times velocity. Now, you don't need to write the formula down of mass times velocity because we're going to be showing it. The key thing you need to remember with uh, momentum for this question is my momentum. My momentum? Oh, my, my momentum is a zero. Uh, well, yeah, whatever. Uh, probably all this bounce something down. Um, give me a few, uh, whatever. So, speed points, or whatever. I don't know, whatever. Um, so, I guess that's whatever. Anyway, uh, back to this actual math stuff, uh, as I, I generally talk myself out of um, actually doing this. So momentum before equals momentum after, so that's conservation of momentum. Now we said momentum is a um, ve vector, so it contains direction and magnitude. So, sort of, we can think of it like that. So basically we have to take into account the direction. Now, we well, could be saying, okay, well we've got two opposite directions, but we're adding the momentum of them to, to uh, these two particles together before and after. So how do we work this way? Well, generally what you do is you choose the momentum, um, in this kind of case, well, the initial momentum would be going if you, right to left. So if particle P is going right and then it ends up going left. We say the initial correct, the positive direction, is going right. Okay, so anything that's going right has a positive momentum, uh, velocity, sorry. Obviously you're not going to have a negative mass. Um, Alright, so what we're going to do is say initially, before, just follow this formula, but instead of putting in um, our numbers, we're going to put in these letters. Okay, so momentum before. So we've initially got a speed of p, uh, uh, speed of particle p at 5u meters per second. I'm just going to write 5u times the mass of p, which is just m. Okay, and we're going to add that, remember, to uh, the Q, which is travelling at u meters per second, however this is negative u, because we're considering this going from right, from left to right, sorry, as the positive direction. Okay, so put a little q up there. Time, so u meters per second times the mass of q, which is kn. Okay, and that's equal to the momentum after. Now the momentum after, well, suddenly p is going in the opposite direction, so the velocity of p is negative. So it's negative 5 over 2 u meters per second, or negative 2.5 meters per second. So, it's like neg two, negative 2.5 u uh, meters per second. Okay, and we times it by the mass of p, which is just m. Okay, now, we, even though we don't know a value for u, we're just kind of considering it knowing we do, and see if we can get rid of it somehow, which obviously we do. Um, otherwise, you would have, they would give you a value of u. Okay, um, and then you add that to the, because we've, so this is the momentum of uh, P before, this is the momentum of Q before, now the opposite directions when they bounce off each other, so P is going in the opposite direction to the positive direction, remember the positive direction is going this way, um, so it's negative 2.5 U times the, fi uh, times the mass, which is M, plus uh, the new direction of U, the new velocity, which is actually positive, so it's plus a half uh, u times the mass of uh, q, which is km, so half of u, km. Okay, so what we're going to do is simply uh, rewrite this equation. So, 5um, take u km, 
equals negative 2.5 um plus half ukm. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do um, is collect light terms. So generally that's the uh, me trying to sound intelligent by saying put the same terms on each side. So get all the ums on one side and all the kms on another so then we can try and cancel something down. Okay, so what we do is add 2.5 um to both sides. Uh, to get rid of it on this side, so therefore we get 7.5 um on this side, and we add ukm to both sides to get rid of it on this side as well, so that gets us uh, 3 over 2, so that's equal to 3 over 2 uh, ukm. It's actually probably easier actually writing, instead of a ukm, this means exactly the same thing, but umk, okay? So that's the same as ukm, just written it in a different order, but they mean the same thing. And that's so we can do something along the lines. Because what we're actually trying to find, remember, is k. So these two, so it's 7.5 times um. So ignoring the 7.5 and the 3, we've got um and umk. Now we've got um on this side and um on this side. So u and m are masses. So basically, this mass of k, uh, q is km and the mass of p is m so basically that's saying this is the mass of p and uh, the mass of q is a constant times the mass of p okay so m therefore is the same however yeah and also we've got u and now u is the same on either side okay so therefore you can just either divide both sides by um or cancel cross them out okay um so you can sort of cross them out so we're left with 7.5 equals 3.2k. Now what you can either do is times both sides by 2, get rid of the half, uh, the fraction. So that leaves you with 15 is equal to 3k. And then obviously you can work out from that, divide both sides by 3, so you get k is equal to 5. Okay. Now you could say, okay, over well there the mass of uh, q is 5m, okay, by just simply replacing the k with 5. So that's part A, over and done with. Uh, part B, so that was three marks. Uh, part, part, part B says, find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P by Q in a collision. Now, it, this question is nowhere near, personally I think don't think it's nowhere near as hard as part A. It's more the theory of understanding um, the terms in the question. So the magnitude of the impulse, now the magnitude, you don't need to get so hung up on that word, that's just asking you really to find the answer. Um, so it's not bothered about the direction, obviously you know which direction it's going to be in. Um, impulse, now impulse is change in momentum, so that's very easy to work out. Exerted by P on, by, uh, so exerted on P by Q. Now that's obvious because, what, what, sorry, you have to, you might have to read that sentence once or twice to be, under, to be able to understand what it's actually asking. So, the magnitude of the impulse exerted on P by Q. So when Q crashes into P and pushes it the other way, um, because obviously it's got a higher mass, otherwise it wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, so exerted on P by Q. So Q is given this momentum. Now, we've got the final mo momentum here of P is 5 over 2 metres per second. Okay, so what it was actually, you've got to think of this. So the velocity was initially 5 metres per second. 5 u meters per second in the other direction. Now, if it was 5 meters per second and it's gone to 2.5 in the other um, direction, so basically one of these, so you could say this was negative, so it's 5 u meters per second take away negative 5, over, 5 u meters per second over 2. So it's actually 7.5 u meters per second is the velocity it's changed by. Okay, however, the, we don't look at just look at the velocity because you have to remember this is momentum. So it's mass times velocity. Now the mass of p doesn't change. So I said it was neg it was 7.5 u meters per second. But obviously we times that by mass because it's momentum. So 7.5 mu is the correct answer. I tried to build it up to that rather than just trying to confuse by going through this, but. If you were to do that, you would just look at the momentum of P before, which was 5 u meters per second, momentum of P after, which was negative 2.5 u times m. Add, uh, so you work out the distance between these two, which is obviously 7.5 u m, and that gets you your answer. Okay, so for part B, 
um, this is how you would write it out. As I said, I, I will post it, I will uh, more than happily email you the link to the mark scheme or um, uh, I, I will send you it as a PDF copy. Okay. Uh, momentum of P before. So you say, this is all you need to write of P before. The reason I'm doing this with the piece of paper, with the actual paper in my hand, is because I have tried on numerous occasions to do it without and always kept turning my back, which isn't too good. Uh, so that's equal to 5 U meters per second. Uh, the momentum of P afterwards is negative 2.5 MU. So therefore, you take them away from each other and you change 7.5 MU. So I mean, that was quite a bit of a scruffy attempt. But that's essentially what you do. So look at P. But yeah, so you kind of label it like that. You don't need to do too, too much work in, so that's meant to be before. After, take them away, uh, you end up adding the sound, because obviously you've got your double negative. So you have your 7.5 MU. So that's why it says magnitude. Okay. Right, so that's question one, over and done with. Hopefully that was uh, quite nice. I do did try and do it in the most e easy way possible, um, but it's quite a nasty momentum question, actually, that. Um, partly because it, it it's easy to get confused with all these different letters and numbers. Um, but that's math, that's algebra, um, and that's how life is. So if you don't get that, um, uh, as I said, I will email you the mark scheme if you want me to. Uh, but personally, the mark scheme is a hell of a lot more confusing uh, than that. So, um, well, to me it is anyway, because of science stand my own logic. Otherwise, you know, I'm pretty stuffed in life. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, sorry if it's been out of focus, and we'll see you in the next video.